Hi, this is Todd from Hot Packs. I want to do a video today to talk to you about uh, discharging lithium ion battery packs. So if you've built a pack for yourself, maybe you're building them for other people, uh, and you want to verify the capacity of your pack, ensure that it, it meets its rated amp hour capacity, as well as the uh, rated current flow, um, this is an inexpensive way to do this. So what, what's on the wall here is 16 gauge nichrome wire. It was purchased on Amazon for uh, somewhere around $18 and it comes in a roll of 50 feet and there's about 40 feet on the wall so I have three uh, independent runs uh, of about 13 feet each uh, connected in, in uh, parallel uh, to achieve the, the current flow and the resistance um, at, at 72 volts as well as um, not exceed the power rating of the wire. So the, the nichrome wire at different gauges has different power ratings. So depending on um, the discharging that you might want to do, you, you need to go through the, the math and ensure that you don't exceed the rating of the wire um, and that the, the length of wire and, and the, the number of parallel runs is configured such that it meets the resistance you need for your desired current flow. So um, another thing I want to point out on the wall over here is uh, these alligator clips allow you to um, adjust the the effective electrical length of the wire and, and vary the resistance to some degree um, so that you can achieve different current flows uh, with your setup. So this uh, this nichrome wire is the same wire that be used inside a, a toaster, um, hair dryer, a variety of other devices, and it's it's really just an inexpensive way to to burn power. So. So what I did over here is I have the, the BMS. This is the JBD BMS on the Hot Packs battery pack. This is uh, what the battery looks like on the inside without the wrap on it. I have a couple uh, that are wrapped here that I'm using as a, a booster for the, uh, the iPad, which is connected to the, the BMS, and it's going to log what the, uh, what the current flow on the pack is. I'm doing a screen record on the iPad, so I'll be able to overlay that in the video. So let's go ahead and discharge this pack. So I've, uh, I've now switched power on to the, the nichrome wire, and as it heats up, uh, we should see the wire start to glow. That's normal, that's what nichrome wire does. And so we're discharging the battery pack. Important point to note here is that the, uh, the nichrome wire, when it, exp when it heats up, it's gonna expand. Like, like any metal has a um, thermal expansion coefficient and it's gonna grow in length. And if you have um, close wire clearance, I had previously built a fixture uh, much smaller than this that didn't have to take up the wall. Um, the problem was the, the wire was so close together that when it expanded, it actually shorted out and overloaded uh, the wire and, and broke the wire. So I'm gonna watch out for that. So this particular battery pack is rated at uh, uh, 20 amp hours. And so we should be able to um, look at the total amp hours that are discharged from the battery pack on the BMS and be able to confirm that it does meet the 20 amp hours. The, uh, the length of the wire that we're having configured right now, it, it should be something a little higher than, uh, so the pack's rated 60 amps. This is probably flowing more like 70 right now. And then uh, as the voltage goes down in the pack, because this is uh, not a constant current discharge, this is more of a, a constant resistance. And it, it's not even really that because the resistance of the nichrome wire changes with temperature, but uh, something like a constant resistance test. So the, um, the current flow will go down with voltage, uh, but it doesn't change that much. So it'll start at 70 and finish around 60 amps. So the battery's rated at 60 amps continuous. Uh, I can actually flow more than that. So this is more like 70. So with this current flow and uh, the capacity of the pack, it takes about uh, 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer to fully discharge the pack. So we'll keep running like this and I'll uh, fast forward the, the video and then at the end we can look at the results.
Okay, so the discharge test is now completed. Uh, you can see the wire is no longer glowing. The BMS has uh, <clears throat> disconnected the discharge port due to uh, low voltage to protect the battery from being over discharged. We can see here we're no longer pulling current from the pack. So one thing to point out here is that uh, this is a pretty uh, aggressive test. So in most applications, you're not going to draw power from the pack this quickly. Uh, the only thing I can think of is in a boat application, you know, where you have a, a constant load like that, you might um, pull this kind of current continuously. Uh, for the electric motorcycle application, which this battery was designed, it's going to be on throttle, off throttle, on throttle, off throttle. So. Um, you'd be discharging the pack over the course of hours, you know, an hour or more, um, not 20 minutes. Um, so, it, you know, at that, at these discharge rates, it is uh, cell temperatures become um, critical. So uh, this is a good time to check your pack. Uh, you can check for wire temperatures. This is pack right here. So my wire temperature, I can check that. I can check the BMS. I mean, I have actual measured values that the BMS is recording right now, but you can kind of put your hands on things and feel, you know, the cells are hot at this point. The wire temperature's okay. Wire temperature's okay. So I'll plot the, the data so it's easier to see.